Recording. Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going through our lecture number nine and we are covering unit eight, which is called practice activities and tasks for language and skills development. Well, okay, let's dive in. Um, so what are practice activities and tasks for language and skill development. Well, these are activities and tasks uh, designed to give learners opportunities to practice and extend um, their use of uh, language, such as new vocabulary, like functional exponents, uh, grammatical structures, or um, of the sub skills of learning, uh, like reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Well, there are many different kinds of activities and tasks with different names and different uses. Well, here we have uh, two writing activities. Can you find three teaching differences between them? And tell me. Thank you. Now I'm going to give you my feedback on that. So. Um, well, we can see that uh, both these activities give learners an opportunity to use language, but in different ways. Well, um, as you see, uh, activity number one, that is a controlled or restricted practice activity, because learners can only use certain items of language. Well, it focuses on accurate use of language, and it is a gap fill activity. Whereas the second one is a less controlled or freer practice activity because the language the learners will use is not carefully limited or controlled. Well, it focuses on communicating a message and it is a task, okay? Well, the same kinds of differences can also be uh, seen in other activities for speaking, writing, and learning new language drills, um, like guided repetitions, Coping words or sentences, jazz chants, uh, dictation and reading aloud are uh, other examples of controlled practice activities. Well, in freer practice activities, the teacher or the materials do not limit the language that learners use. Well, examples of these are discussions, solving problems, well, sharing ideas and comparing ideas. Um, well, writing emails, writing stories, letters, you know, invita invitations, compositions, okay? Well, actually here we're going to have six more activities. So the question is what skills, sub skills or language do they focus on? Um, probably before we start, I need to clarify the difference between skills and sub skills, right? So as we have already mentioned, there are four skills we teach our students. These are reading, writing, listening, and speaking. And sub skills are, okay, let me illustrate. For example, if a skill is a reading, uh, so then reading for gist or reading for specific information in the text would be the sub skills for reading so to say, a more focused type of a skill, so to say. Okay, so what skills, sub-skills, language do they focus on? And what is the name of the type of the activity? Well, um, it's not a test. I, will, I would just like to get some of your ideas to see what you think, what you already know. So don't worry if you give me something wrong, uh, just speak, well, speak out, speak your mind. Okay, so let's have a look at the first one. Well, the first, activity says read the story then answer these questions how old is the girl where does she live what is your friend's name thank you next one oh no no not next one here i'm going to give my feedback on that well so what we have here is well what skills sub skills or language do they focus on that is reading for specific information. And uh, uh, what is the name of the type of the activity? That is a WH questions for comprehension. Uh, questions that begin with questions where question was like, which, what, how, when, and why, yeah. Okay, let's have a look at the second one. Again, the same two questions in the task. 
Um, a, listen to the tape and choose the best answer. The children's school is A, near the house, B, near the shops, C, opposite the post office. B, now listen again, are these sentences true or false? The school is new, the classroom is big, the library has many books. Thank you. My feedback. Well, what skills, sub-skills of language do they focus on? That is listening for specific information. And uh, what is the name of the type of the activity? So for part A, that would be a multiple choice question. And for part B, true or false questions. Number three. Look at these pictures and then read the story. Put the pictures in the correct order. Write the correct number one to six under each picture. Thank you. Well, that is a reading for detail. And let's call it ordering. Listen to the tape. And in pairs, fill in this form. Girl's name, girl's address, name of girl's friend. Thank you. Well, here we have listening for specific information again. And let's call it form filling. Number five, work in pairs. Each of you should use one of these roll cards. A, your friend has a problem. Give him or her the best advice you can. B, you have a problem. You want to go to university, but you find studying very difficult. Ask your friend for advice. Thank you. Well, here we have uh, like fluency in speaking or free of practice activities about new language. And uh, that is a role play. On to number six. Get into groups of four. Find out which food your friends like and dislike most. Ask, which food do you like most? Which food do you dislike most? Thank you. Well, accuracy in speaking or controlled practice of new language. And uh, survey, that's a survey. Okay, I think we are done with the six activities. So we can see that activities can differ in several ways. The skills or sub-skill they focus on. Uh, what's type? they are, uh, and what's uh, interaction patterns they use. The kinds of skills or the language they focus on and uh, the interaction patterns they use are not fixed. Um, for example, multiple choice questions could be most, uh, mostly used for reading, listening, or grammar activities, and uh, can be done mm, like individually in pairs or in groups. Similarly, form filling could be used for reading, listening, or grammar practice and done individually in pairs or in groups. So here we have a lot of flexibility, as you see. Well, um, activities five and six that we have talked about, both involve learners talking to one another to exchange information they don't know. This means they are talking in order to communicate, not just to, to practice language. This kind of activity in which learners exchange information that uh, only one of them has is called an information gap or a communicative activity. Well, an activity may focus on accuracy or communication, depending on how it is introduced by the teacher or the materials. For example, 
uh, the survey above is focused on accuracy because um, it limits the language that learners use. It limits the language uh, the learners use uh, to ask and answer to specific questions. If the instructions for their activity were not these, but for example, like this, uh, find out about your friends likes and dislikes in food, this would be not this would not restrict learners choice of language and the activity would focus on communication rather than on uh, like the language on accuracy. Okay, well, here we go with some tips for you as teachers as, and as future teachers. Okay, so when selecting activities for uh, practicing a language or the skills or speaking or writing, we need to decide whether to do a controlled practice or a free practice activity, an activity that focuses on accuracy or on communication. Well, when choosing activities for developing skills, we need to decide which particular skill or sub skill to focus on. And of course, lessons usually consist of uh, a series of linked activities. So, and actually, there are several different ways of linking activities and lessons. Uh, well, I'm going to show you a couple of them. Well, let's say we will talk on PPP, uh, TBL, and skills-based lesson, right? Well, what is a PPP? It's a sequence of a lesson when first you do the presentation, you present the new language, like, for example, you kind of explain what present simple is, then you do the control practice, like, you know, the typical papers and gap field activities that you do. And then you do some freer practice, like communication. Uh, maybe they find out something about their partners, asking each other questions or telling their stories. So that is a typical PPP sequence. Presentation practice, uh, well, like presentation control practice and freer practice. Uh, well, actually, PPP deprivates as uh, present, practice, and produce. So free your practice stands for producing the language in, independently, so to say. Okay, TBL, task-based learning. Well, typically, it starts with a discussion, which is a surprise. Then uh, come several tasks. Then surprisingly becomes the presentation. And then we focus on form kind of inverted PPP, so to say. Well, skills-based lessons. Well, uh, they typically contain a warmer or a leading or maybe both. Uh, then go some comprehension tasks, like for example, there is a text and there are some questions that check the student's comprehension of this text. And there are some post-task activities where we could work with the language from this text or the listening, where we could um, like um, speculate on on the content more, where we could produce something or our own, like our own texts. So all this would go to the post-task activities. Okay, well, let us uh, have a look at one example. So, well, for example, we take a listening skills lesson. Well, the lead-in would be mm, uh, discussing the topic of the listening and like learning any important new vocabulary. Then we go to the comprehension tasks, like uh, listening to the recorded conversation and answering multiple choice gist questions about it. Then uh, we get listening to the conversation again and completing the form with specific information. And then we do some post-task activities like brief discussion of the topic of the conversation. Okay, you can see that the comprehension activities for listening or reading start with focusing on more general levels of comprehension before moving on to sub skills that require paying more detailed or specific attention to the text. Okay, example number two, a topic-based lesson developing several skills. Um, so a lead-in would be speaking about the topic plus 
learning, like uh, doing uh, kind of related language work. Um, then we have a task or a number of tasks, like listening to a recording about the topic, reading a text about the topic. Then we get some post-task activities, discussing the topic uh, and or uh, focus on the language of the topic. And then, for example, we can write a composition about this topic. Okay. On we go. Now it's time for you to think, and I'm going to test your comprehension of this lecture a little bit. Well, what do these activities aim to develop? So you, you'll see a number of activities. So would they rather focus on communication or accuracy? Accuracy means how accurately you use the language. So the, the forms, the language itself, rather than communicating the idea. So communication or accuracy. Choral trilling of pronunciation. Would it go to communication or accuracy? Vote, please. Thank you. And this is accuracy. Of course, it is accuracy. Role play. Thank you. I would say that role play is mostly about accuracy because uh, when you do role play, very often it is uh, like preoccupied, like the content is already kind of given. But if uh, and that's why there is like there is no uh, information that you actually share with your partner. So uh, the role play has been already designed by you before you act it out. So that's why probably it wouldn't be a communication activity, but rather an accuracy activity where you focus on the language rather than on the message. Dictation. Thank you. Accuracy again. Discussions. Thank you. So that would be a communication activity. Get feeling exercise like this. Thank you. Of course, this is accuracy. Story writing, when students write their stories. Thank you. I would say communication because they communicate their ideas. Copying words, for example, from the blackboard onto your notebook. Thank you. Accuracy. Repeating new words. Thank you. Accuracy again. Describing pictures. Thank you. Well, here it depends. So I would rather say that that would be a communication activity, especially if, uh, for example, the person who is listening to me would have to choose the picture that I'm talking about, or maybe would have to reproduce the picture that I'm describing. If it is just purely describing the picture, so maybe it would rather focus on the accuracy. So if you are sitting on the fence here, well, maybe you're right. Learning conversations by heart. Thank you. No, so that would be accuracy, of course. Problem solving. Thank you. I think that problem solving is mostly about communication. Okay, one more activity. Which skill or skills could these activities be used to develop? So as you see, I'm going to uh, show you a number of activities. For example, oh, okay, the examples later. So what activities we talk about? Listening, speaking, writing, or reading. And if you can, uh, you can select an activity and then even maybe you could tell me if it could be used for some sub skill. So it would be even better. Okay, so uh, listening, speaking, writing, or reading, if uh, the activity is story completion. 
Thank you. Um, I'm not going to comment on that a lot, I think, but I guess that if there is a story, so definitely it's going to be a writing thing, right? And uh, depending on how we organize this, well, of course, it would be writing and reading, yes, because uh, when you are completing the story, you need to read what has been beforehand, and then you write your own story. But if you ask your students to work in groups, that would also involve listening and speaking. Form feeling. Thank you. Well, uh, usually, well, actually, it can involve listening or reading and writing, right? So, if uh, typically when you have a form, you have got this blank paper with some gaps that you need to fill in. And typically, you fill in the forms by listening to someone talking or by uh, reading the text. So probably everything but speaking in this case, but again, it depends on how you organize the group work. Information gap. Thank you. So we have mentioned the information gap activity previously. So uh, information gap is when you, for example, have some information about the person and your partner has got the second part of this information, you can communicate to each other just to share this information and to get the complete picture, so to say. So uh, very often it involves speaking and writing as you have to complete maybe something. Uh, and of course, it can involve a little bit of reading if you have got a form on your hand. And how can speaking go without listening, right? So that means that you will have to listen to your partner. So mostly listening and speaking and sometimes writing or reading, depending on how you design the exercise. True, false questions. Thank you. Uh, well, of course, if you have true or false questions, you've got to read them. And uh, probably it can be combined with some listening activity or with the uh, text. So that would be a reading. Role play. Thank you. Well, definitely writing. If we have writing, you would have to read the things. And then as you are rehearsing your role play, you would have to speak and listen. So it means that probably it would involve every activity. Okay, now a little bit of reflection uh, and your opinions and ideas. Well, uh, you will see two learners commands. I would like you to think of them and tell me what, what you think and what you feel about them, how much you kind of tune in with these learners and who probably you would most agree with. So let's look at the first one. I don't like doing lots of different activities. It's confusing. And the second learner, I like doing a mixture of activities with, with some focusing on accuracy and some on fluency. That really helps me learn. Mm, what kind of learner are you? Like, are you closer to the first or to the second learner? And what do you think of these commands as a teacher? Who do you most agree with? Thank you. Next activity is only for those who actively teach. Look through two pages of your course book. Can you name all the different kinds of activities it contains? And what is the purpose of each activity? Please leave me your answers here. Thank you. Okay, TKD part. Um, match the description like this. For example, the teacher says a word and asks all the learners to repeat it together. To one of the following teaching activities. We have a problem solving, a role play, a labeling, choral drilling, form filling, uh, a game, a survey and project work. So what uh, teaching activity do you think matches the first description? Thank you. And that is choral drilling, of course. The teacher puts learners in pairs and asks one of them to act as a lost tourist asking the way. 
and the others as a local person giving directions. Thank you. That is a role play. The learners use maps to work out the best way to get from X to Y. Thank you. That is problem solving. The learners listen to a tape and complete a timetable. Thank you. Form filling we have. The learners ask all their classmates their opinion about something and then note it down. Thank you. That would be a survey. The learners go to the local museum, the library and the internet to find out about dinosaurs. They then make an exhibition of wall posters about them. Thank you. Project work. Well, and the last one, the learners choose names of objects from a list and to write the names on the pictures of the objects. Thank you. Labeling, of course. And I guess here we come to the end of our lecture today. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed that. Well, see you in a while.